right, ladies and gents, today we've got the one, the only, Mr. Infamous, the intellectual instigator, the mind terrorist, the number one motherfucking draft pick this year, Devin Walker. What? I was reading something. There he is. Holy shit. Oh, oh my there God. he is. The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> His audio is still connecting. Devin. Can you guys hear me? Oh, yeah. Yay. You can hear you now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me. Dude, thank you so much for coming on. I just, first of all, I knew thank he'd you. be drinking. I, I, I told him. <laughs> I made a special little martini just for you guys. Yeah. Oh, oh my nice. gosh. That's amazing. I love it. Yes. I know. I, I told him, I was like, dude, you guys bring your drinks, bring whatever. We can't miss the opportunity to have a drink with Devin. <laughs> well, let me just start off by saying thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate that you answered my message and that you were willing to come on and just kind of chat with us a little bit and bullshit about the show. We're all like super big fans. So we honestly didn't even really expect to hear back from you. So when we did, fireworks went off in the team chat. Let's just say that. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Well, yeah. I appreciate you guys extending the invite. And it is, I am a difficult person to get on the horn. But once you get that secret email, yep, yep. that's how you know it's real. That's the, that's the secret connection there, huh? <laughs> if you get the secret email and, you know, Leah gets her hands on it, then it's, then it's, then it gets done. So well, I, I definitely out, feel special. to her and to you guys. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Thank yeah. you. Um, so I'm going to ask one real quick question because I'm unfortunately still at the office. So I'm going to get out of here pretty quickly and then let you guys get at mm -hmm. it. So Devin, we noticed uh, the other day that we had somebody with uh, your name in our group on Facebook. And I was assuming that you probably didn't do Facebook. Am I mistaken in that? Yeah, no, I've got a book. Um, I'm in a couple of the groups. I like the groups. They post really funny stuff. And I'm not as we've seen here today, particularly technologically savvy. So I like <laughs> when people are able to capture clips and like make memes out of stuff. And I like to get up to date with what people are, are liking and not liking in the season and see if that kind of matches with what I'm thinking. So uh, yes, I do have a uh, Facebook and I probably am in your group. What's the group? I tell you right now. It's the name of the podcast, uh, Challenge the Trash Talk. It's the name of the podcast. But I'm not, I'm about to be. Right. <laughs> We actually, uh, we actually run a few different groups on there, but that was the one that we noticed you in. We actually have another account in there, a, what we call a Stan account. And this specific <laughs> account is a Dial Stan account. And I freaked out the other day because you apparently liked one of Dial Stan's posts. And that is how we I discovered you were. Liking. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I stay liking Dial content, for the record. If anybody <laughs> yeah. wants... If anybody wants to get my attention, <laughs> dial content. Right yes. That. But then, yeah, that's 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 probably me now. I can't. I've had yeah. a few. I'm not going to try to figure it out, but I imagine that I am in that group. I don't know even how to really work it, but I like to go to the watch category and then to like groups I follow. And it's all like people getting haircuts uh, and challenge <laughs> stuff. For some reason, I like watching haircut videos i, I like it why. too they're interesting yeah or like the ones where people like dye their hair and they just totally fuck it up those are my favorites yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah i'm less into the not successful haircuts but I, am, I like really good i like watching like really good haircuts i don't know it's weird but I like maybe i need to check into that Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, you know what i'm stuck on tiktok in the like the lawn care stuff with people mowing their lawns and edging it watch it for hours so i'm right there with you yeah i do there's something about it man yeah. well i mean one one thing i was going to ask you is is how in the world devin walker does not have a tiktok but now that you've kind of made it clear that you're not so technologically savvy it makes a little bit more sense yeah i feel like i should have a tiktok i thought about getting a tiktok and then sometimes tiktoks will come up in my instagram feed and it's a lot of like kids and I was like, I don't really want to do like watch videos of kids right. dancing. Seemed yeah. a little weird. So, but now I get, I understand now because some of my castmates have it. So I've asked them about it. Mm -hmm. It's like, you can do your own thing. You can make advertisements and it's more of just like a mini movie platform. And so right. now that I understand it that way, I probably will get one. 
Yeah, I, I think you do great on TikTok, honestly. I think that you would actually be perfect for TikTok. I was really shocked when I found out you didn't have one. Light bulb. Yeah. I actually, I think I can say this. Uh, I'm going to say it. So we were just in New York filming after shows and I actually did some TikToks for the challenge TikTok. So I Ooh. will be making my TikTok debut soon, um, depending on the social team, but that'll be my debut. And then maybe I'll just, I'll, I'll use that to launch. I love it. Whether you were going to tell us or not, Josh, I don't know if you saw any of Josh's stories. He's like, I'm going to give you guys a behind the scenes look and took off running without a mask, got in trouble. It was up there showing his little phone at the screen and then he got in trouble and had to go back but we saw we saw you guys at the aftermath uh recordings <laughs> he, was, he was wilding out that's for sure that's for sure oh, i thought you were gonna say josh got a TikTok, and i was like wait whoa because not that i'm aware of <laughs> no not that i know of that would be a game changer that would right there <laughs> just yeah. serially answering math problems <laughs> <laughs> So I came up with a nickname for you, Devin. I want to know if you like it. If you like it, please put it on a t-shirt. You can have all the property. I came up with the um, the intellectual instigator. I heard this. No, I saw this uh, because there was a post of me and Huey on Facebook. God, yep. we're doing like a shameless Facebook promotion right now, by the way. Which, that was us. That was my post. That was us. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah, that was lit. I saw that. I said the intellectual instigator. I like that. I like that better than when people were calling me the puppet master, uh, on are you the one, because that actually mm -hmm. followed me into the challenge. And then what you get is a bunch of people never trusting you because they're afraid that you're using them. Uh, and so nicknames are incredibly important and the intellectual instigator is safe enough where I think it will not affect me in the game, right? Right. Just, that's not really that bad. It's just like no. investigating intellectually. Yep. Yeah. It fits. Well, it fits you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well done. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it nicknames eight point nine. I'm gonna give it. Thank all you. Right. That's yeah, solid. that's a good. That's 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 good. That's a fair <laughs> score. That's, yeah, that's a that's really fair. That's score. That's a really good score. <laughs> Since Josh brought up the stories and you guys doing the, the shows in the, the yeah. aftermath shows in New York, uh, I had to ask about this infamous goose that you got, Tori. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So jury's still out on uh, the goose or the duck. We're not sure uh, which one it is. She's gonna <laughs> die. Also, that there is a question about the duck. So four people that are gonna lose their shit about this are Nani, Casey, and Tori. <laughs> so we were waiting to do the show, the after shows. And I wanted to go to the store to get um, something to drink. It was parched. So I went down the street and then I asked this woman, where, where should I, what store should I go to? And she pointed me in the right direction. And she happened to be like this lady that was having this big, what seemed like very consistent garage sale in like an open lot in Brooklyn. So on my way back, naturally, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go like get something for, from this lady because she helped me. So there was a deer, uh, like a big porcelain deer. And then there was a duck. And then there was a little pig that was turned upside down. And it was like something you clean your shoes off on. Oh. <laughs> and so I called Tori and I was like, listen, Dave, what do you want? Do you want a deer? Do you want this duck or do you want a pig? And she was like, I'm, well, I want like a deer with zero context. Didn't, didn't ask a single question. She was just like, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> so I asked the lady, you know, if I could have the deer and she's like, yeah, sure. And, but she's like, it's like very heavy. It, I tried to pick the thing up. It must've been 130 pounds. It was wow. like the heaviest deer. It was only like this big. It was, I don't know what it was made out of Thor's like ax material. <laughs> <laughs> so heavy and i was like i'm not carrying this deer back there it was like a block so i just got the duck i was like i'll get the duck she's like 30 dollars. i said 16 cash take it or leave it got the duck uh, <laughs> and then i gave it to tori and she you know the rest is history hashtag oh my gosh duck. i call it i say hashtag the duck but i don't know i thought it, it was a duck more, too it looks more like a goose does it see i thought it was a duck too uh, or maybe i just seen your hashtag and i just went with that i'm not sure I'm not big on the duck goose biology, so I wasn't hundred percent sure on it, but. Uh, the difference between the two of them is, is that geese are quitters and ducks <laughs> are riders. That's the difference. There we go. Geese, so you learn something new every day. The geese take off. They say, no, thanks. Ducks hold it down. I think. I love it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs>
All right, Devin. Well, hey, I appreciate you answering those couple questions for me. I'm going to let you guys go so you can get to it. Uh, thank you once again, and uh, best of luck, guys. All right. So actually, since we're talking about Tori, I, I listened to uh, the podcast that you did with them back when you guys were filming Double Agents. And on that podcast, you had mentioned that you had previously attempted to start a podcast of your own and failed many times. I was wondering if you'd tell us a little bit about that. What kind of podcast were you trying to do? I've had several failed podcasts. Well, I don't know if they were failed. They just as much as they were given up on. But I'm sure, as you guys know, in the podcast game, consistency is key. Right. Uh, and although I am a very consistent person in some respects, I am not scheduled consistent. <laughs> uh, and so I have a hard time, like, producing stable content. And I had a, my first podcast, which is actually I'd like to get back to this. And I have some good episodes in the archives. Uh, it was called Back to Reality. And it was essentially me interviewing uh, reality TV personalities about their actual lives. So oh, I love it. it would be literally zero questions about any of the stuff that they've done on TV and only right. questions about what they do in the off season. Right. Wow. Okay. Which for me, because I know what they do when we're there is more interesting. And I, and I thought it was a cool, like you only get uh, an edited miniature version of somebody on the show. And so to be able to see what's, you know, beyond that in, in what really 85% of their life is kind of cool. And I, I've got some good episodes in the bank. I just, I, you know how it goes, you, you trail off of something and then you just kind of, it just goes. Um, but I'd like to, I reserve the rights to bring that one back. That's, that's really cool. I was just kind of, you know, curious, you know, what you were into as far as, um, you know, away from the challenge so much so that you would want to do a podcast. And that's actually a really interesting idea. I think that people would take well to that. Be glad yeah. to see the other side of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like a, yeah, it's like a look into the other side that we don't really get. Some of these people too, like, I will say this, um, we mentioned Josh earlier. He's such a polarizing character for people that only get the one side of him, but almost unanimously, if you actually spend some time with Josh, which I didn't realize this, I can't even believe I'm about to say this, but nice, well-rounded guy. Like he is actually a nice guy that's like very genuine and cares a lot about his friends. And he's like, uh, he's a good guy. So it's just like, I would have never known that if, Sometimes I don't take the time to know people outside of the show, but me and Josh were forced into that situation by literally being eliminated at the same time. The poetic justice of the whole thing still blows my mind. Like, <laughs> okay, we went at each other for you know 12 episodes and then just randomly eliminated at the same time in the in the same room they were like by the way you guys are staying in the same room i was like all right well we have to be friends now or you're gonna kill me and so there we go well there goes one of my questions <laughs> what was that well the question was actually you know how do you go from going back and forth with with josh and saying what's eight times nine big brother sucks getting him so riled up to then we see you the next time we see you guys together you're in a car arriving with Josh and Fessy for Spies, Lies, and Allies. And I'm like, we need the story. We need yeah. it. Yeah. No, and you gave it to us without that. That scene, was, that scene was amazing, though. I just want to <laughs> yeah. say that. That was perfect. You go from Big Brother Sucks to let's talk about this Big Brother Alliance. <laughs> I am not one that will die on the hill of any feud, especially if it is going to uh, be in opposition of my end game, right? So... Uh, although I was a very prideful and spiteful person in the past, I've learned, especially in this game and honestly, even in life, like those grudges that I used to hold and yes, I'm a big fan of getting even and I love getting even, but also I like fucking winning and I like winning more than I like getting even. Right. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I think you have to put little shit to the side, uh, and see the bigger picture and, who wants to see the same thing over and over again anyways? Like me and Josh had a really hilarious argument. Uh, we had a really hilarious two month argument. Right. And that's like, and now I've gotten to see him. Fessy's another one that um, I think we're just very different people. So it takes a little bit of time to recognize who somebody is 
and when you add all the stresses of a million dollars and the pride of even someone like TJ watching you, Fessy's an athlete. He's been an athlete his whole life, right? Like he likes to succeed. He likes to um, compete. That's what he does. So if he feels like he hasn't done a good job, he's already being hard on himself. And then if TJ throws an extra jab in there and then I see it, that's a recipe for disaster, right? Because I'm going right. to stir the pot up. Oh, yeah. And, so, and now I get it. Like now I get Fessy. Now I understand. And don't get it twisted. That man's a beast. He, he is he is yeah. a physical beast. And he's smarter than people give him credit for. He's, he's a problem in this game um, if he's working against you. And then you, you add that up with Josh and his political abilities. And it just didn't make any sense for me to or for them to try to like wage this war that was just mutually destructive right and that's how we got in the car right <laughs> there you go you know i look around and it's like clearly i'm outsized and i'm outnumbered but i think they also respect my game in the sense that a lot of people are good at the same thing and a few people are good at like random things and then there's only a couple ever that have been good at all of them and that's when you get into talking about Darrell and Wes and Johnny and Jordan in CT. That's when right. you get in that that category. Mm -hmm. For the most part, people are one-sided. And right. it does not make sense for you to beef with somebody that is really strong in the area that you're weak because it's not like you know you have an advantage on any given day. Right, right. No, and it's like joining forces. You know, you got the brain on one side, the brawn on the other, bring them together. And, you know, that's it's an unstoppable force. I like I it. I, alliance. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to lie. I just didn't expect to see it so soon. Like, yeah. it was going to happen, but like, damn, day yeah. one. Caught me on a good day, I guess. Right. You know? <laughs> caught, me at a, caught me, honestly, caught me at a good time in my life, too. I am, I am all for everybody doing well and uh and less for spite which i'm sorry makes for worse tv but i i feel like i still bring the sauce oh yeah i honestly so obviously you know we run a couple of um facebook groups and so we're you know pretty tied in with a lot of the fan base and we i know you've seen your fan base grow but we have literally watched it skyrocket in just these last two seasons um between double agents and and up to where we are now in spies lies and allies the fans love it so you know even if you're not necessarily you know being spiteful or you know doing the same kinds of things other people are i think what you bring to the game is very unique um and i think that the fans are are learning how to appreciate it more and i love to see it i appreciate that i i think um I try not to be too affected by people liking me or disliking me because for a long time people, you know, didn't like me and then they did like me and then they hated me. And then mm -hmm. now it's start, it's a roller coaster, right? And right. Uh, I think that comes with the territory of not settling into a role. Right. So I know where I got the most love, but does that then mean that I'm going to settle in that role? For me, I was like, no, I'm just going to keep, that's how I felt at that time. I was aggressive. I was, you know, not like that's what, and I might get back to that point. I don't know. But right now, just in this timeline, like where I was at now, I was like, I don't, I just did all that and it didn't work. So let me switch it up and let me try something else. And I, I, I one thing people can count on me for is that it's going to be, you are gonna get the version of myself that is authentic in that moment. I'm not gonna to try to be this person from that season. I'm gonna be whoever I am in that current moment. And I think sometimes people love it, sometimes people hate it, mm -hmm. uh, but I'll take that when if I can be confident that that's who it was. If I can stand behind it and be like, yeah, that's how I felt in that moment, then I feel good about that. I think that honestly, at least speaking on my behalf, that's a big reason that I've always been a fan of yours is, is that you come off very authentic and real, even if it's like you said, even if you're not the same kind of person through different shows or through different even seasons, um, it still feels really authentic when you're on screen and it feels genuine. And I think that that means a lot to your fans. Just shout out to the, I don't know what our, I don't know what the name is yet, but shout out to the Devin fans. I like to call you Devin Staters. 
uh, that's not going to stick. That's a that's a six point eight. Uh, but I'm open to names of people that are my fan. Tori's got the tornadoes. Right? Oh, yeah, yep. Which is lit. Uh, yeah, that Tasha, is pretty. Yeah, Tatcha had Tatcha's Titans. Uh, I'd like a fan base name. Hmm. Just, wow, we got to work on that. We got to work on it. We're gonna come I'm up just, with something yeah. good for you. We're gonna come up with something good for you. Throwing it out there. I love so it. So I um I've been a fan. Um, my wife more so. She wanted me to tell you hi and thanks for the cameo. It was amazing. <laughs> uh, she oh dude best cameo ever. But um, we've been a fan since Are You the One since before you even came on the challenge. Um, watching you work that and figure it out. That's where it's like the intellectual part of your instigator nickname came from. But growing from there, watching you um, be different Devons throughout the challenge is 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 good. I love watching you grow. I've seen I've seen the good, the bad, and the Devon. I guess that's what we'll say now. But even a part of some very memorable moments in challenge history. And I'm gonna ask you about one. If you can give us a like how you felt behind the scenes of Postagate. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Man, when you run the tapes back, I have been in some epic moments. Un yeah, you have. Like, unintentionally, just like wrong place, wrong time. <laughs> there, my dumbass is like wasted just in the background for no reason. <laughs> Oh, Postigate was a tough one, man. That was my that was my lows, my low point of my uh, uh, one of it's it led to one of my life and definitely one of the show. Uh, and you know it it happened so quickly. Um, I'm gonna do everybody a favor and not do the thing all the time when I answer this question. Not that it's the same question, but I talk about this subject sometimes. Tony knows how I feel about him. I fucked up in that moment. I've apologized to Tony a thousand times. Uh, I was so shocked and taken aback by the whole thing. And we were in South Africa on like their version of July 4th. So at that time we were still allowed to go out. So I, you know, we were out and I was talking to the bartender and I'm, you know, as I knew there was like something in the air, people were, you know, excited. And I was like, well, is tonight, today a holiday or something? They're like, yeah. And he explained to me, it's pretty much July 4th for South Africa. I think it was Nelson Mandela's birthday, I think, I think. And someone can fact check me and see when we were filming there, but I, it, it had something to do with Nelson Mandela. And I was like, all right, well, I'm here. That's awesome. What an all-star guy. I'm getting wasted. So <laughs> naturally started hammering shots. Everybody, no one else was celebrating Mon Nelson Mandela's birthday. They were just like getting wild. But I was lighting it up like with that as an intention. Again, real weird time in my life. My dad just died. I probably shouldn't have come back to the show. I did anyways. And we're on the bus, we're going home, everyone's drunk. And I I didn't even know Corey and Nelson, or excuse me, Corey and uh, Tony didn't like each other. And you know, then the pasta goes out the window. In Corey's <laughs> defense, Corey is somebody that is very he's a very respectful person and he also takes things very literally so he felt disrespected by a very blatant act right it wasn't like it wasn't like something that could have been interpreted as anything except right. for what it was which right. was that yeah. Tony stole his food and just threw it out the window for absolutely no reason yeah right and so like i get it i get what he was thinking too but then also it was another one of those lose-lose situations where it's just like, A, my partner just slammed one of the people that I'm closer with in this show, but also he could be really hurt and we could be going home. And it was just all bad. So I was just blown away because even before that, like the reason I mentioned we were at the bar, we were all drinking together. Me, Corey, Tony, Johnny, I we had just gotten there. We had just gotten in the game. So we hadn't irritated anybody. Everyone was happy to see us. We had a ton of friends. Me and Corey were Mr. and Mr. Popular. Everybody wanted to hang out with us. So we were all drinking together, having fun. Like, and then we get in the bus and like that, it's, it snapped. And that's how quickly it can happen in that show. It's like, they talk about bang, bang plays in the NFL. Like I wish we, the bang, bang plays in the challenge last like three hours, but it can shift 
from one thing to something completely different and someone getting kicked off the show really quickly. We saw that in this last episode. Right. Like Pizzagate 2 went from 0 to 100 and we don't yeah. know what's going to happen now. Yeah, right. exactly. Went from, you know, my pizza's gone to, you know, drinks thrown in faces and and you know and I'm I'm actually glad you brought this up because that was something that I wanted to ask you um was, you know, your opinion on this whole Fessy Amber, you know, was that a blindside? Did he blindside her? Or did she really know that that was kind of coming? Did she kind of have that coming? And I, I'm sorry, I know I'm throwing a lot at you right now, but something else that seems to be running around in the uh, fan groups right now is, you know, is Amber a vet? Does she is she part of the vet alliance? Does she count? She came in late. She's only done one season, but she's a champ. So how does that work? Yeah, I was gonna. So there are some nuances to the answers in this question. Um, <laughs> it's the the the, dr the main driving points are is Amber a vet and was it a blind side, right? Right. Yeah. Right. So those two things, they're it, brilliant journalism here. Uh, <laughs> asking the right questions. That is a million dollar. Those are the million dollar two questions. Hey, hey. <laughs> Just as clueless as us, huh? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we don't even know. It, it's to the point where I, so in my opinion, yes, by definition of the Veteran Alliance, it was a violation. Right. Of the of truce. The of the truce. Right. Uh, but that truce was fragile. And, yeah. and and that truce did subtly exclude people, uh, especially because she came in late. She had won the previous season, and a lot of people didn't like they had put that much work in, and she got one right off the rip. In right. my opinion, totally earned it. Very hard show to win. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it takes so much mentally and physically, mentally, 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 physically, and so she, anyone that has one of these wins, in my opinion, is, is a badass. But it was just kind of the perfect storm. And also, Fessy likes to make big moves. Yeah. He's, he's got a track record. No matter who you are, friend or foe, you're not hmm. safe. Yeah. Because you don't know, is he is an impulsive person. I've learned this, and I, and I don't think he would agree with this, that he's an impulsive person. But he is. And I think his argument would be, I see through the angles. I look at them. I analyze them. And I believe that he does. But I believe that he also goes back after that analyzation to what his gut said. I think he's the kind of person that can convince him of some, himself of something. Mm. Uh, and you don't want to be that way in the challenge because you have to look at things objectively, right? Right. So, yes, maybe Amber had a bunch of people on her list above him but survive in advance right. there's also a bunch of people below you right <laughs> yeah right yeah exactly and, no yeah and that's and, fair yeah and she's partners with josh so if, if they ever win he's never letting that happen you you were really what you were worried about in that situation was one singular vote that they thought eventually and don't get it twisted he had other people in his ear assuring him of this move was correct Oh, what I'm they sure. saw in, in the nuance of this whole vet alliance was that both sides were trying to load themselves with pawns in being rookies and still keep it active that we'll never go for each other, right? And so I even wrote, I wish I had the poem, I wish I had my notebook. I wrote a poem about this and in the house and it was like, we're all like, I see it so, I saw it so clearly with seated. I saw it so clearly what was going on. And I, and I was guilty of it too. And essentially the poem is like, we're all gonna sit in a room eventually and yell at each other for doing the same exact thing that we are doing ourselves. And every single person was guilty of it. And Fessy was guilty of it. And he saw myself, CT, Kyle, right? As the other side and saw Amber as someone that might be vulnerable to that other side and decided to take a shot, not maybe necessarily at her, but at a, at a potential strength for a divide that was gonna happen later down the line. So I won't say that he was short-sighted. I think he saw the whole big, big picture, mm -hmm. but in my opinion, he took the shot way too early right. on somebody that really hadn't done anything in this game to prove otherwise, then I'm gonna do exactly what you guys tell me to do. Right, right. 
Right. Well, and that was that was kind of my thing was, you know, I was a little shocked by how early that it had happened. I thought maybe, you know, I don't think it was a bad move, but I do agree that it was just done a little bit early. Yeah, too soon, too soon. And especially with her still being partnered with Josh at that point and him and Josh working together at that point, I just don't see her going right for Fessy the way I, it, it seemed like he thought she was going to, you know, but I, I definitely do agree. It was it was just too soon. I don't think she was going to go after him at all. You had like, yeah, you have to, yeah, she could have gotten stolen maybe. But again, that's so far down the line to think about. Like, I played this game enough times now to know the way you want to play it is survive in advance. Right. Get to the next week. It's a tournament, right? It's a tournament. And the only way that you can win in a tournament is by not getting eliminated. So you have to not get eliminated every week. You can't look ahead and think, you know, I'm going to try to set myself up for this. That can be a portion of the game, but it really, I've seen more mistakes happen from that in this game than anything else is people counting their chickens and thinking that it's all lined up and thinking that they've got a stranglehold on it. And then boom, TJ with a stiff right and you're on your ass. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it makes sense. It, it kind of that reminds me of um, uh, last season on double agents first elimination. They went after tried to go after CT and West and get them against each other only to find out that, you know, teams weren't competing together. It was either a guy's elimination or a girl's elimination. And I think had the house waited to go after CT and West and found out how everything was going to work before they attempted to make such a big move, I think that it may have changed the game a little bit. Intel is crucial. You have to know what the rules are before you try to do anything. Right. Otherwise, you're planning for something that you don't even know. It's like, yeah, I mean, that was the perfect example. We didn't know that it was going to be, you know, female or male eliminations. Yeah. If you go there the first night and it's a female, you can then assume. Right, yeah. <laughs> and then maybe... And, you know, if you're them at that point, I wish that I wish nobody did that shit. I wish I I wish and hope that we can continue to play the way that we have the, this these first few episodes, because this to me is the way the game's supposed to get played. Right. Bring your stripes. Don't go after the strong people. Don't don't send minions in. Beat them yourself. Mm hmm. Exactly. You, you want to beat them, beat them yourself. There's only what, five, four, three, four, five spots per gender in a final depending on what it is maybe six maybe we start with 34 we got to get from 34 down to 12 or 10 or eight you, at that point i know everybody wants to get other people to do that's like the perfect assassination right is you didn't even have to do it yourself right but my my philosophy on it is if I can't beat you, if you're standing next to me and I, I feel completely depleted and I, there's no chance I can beat you, I don't even deserve to be there. So I, I get have the fortunate ability to play the game with the potentially delusional thought that I can beat anybody out there. Like, I firmly believe that. I don't know if I'm like, I could be proven to be wrong after in the next few years. I don't know. But I feel I really feel like even CTs out there, I'm like, I think I could probably find a way maybe not every time but a, a couple times that i could win and maybe this is one of those couple times that's that's how i'm thinking so talking about your victories how good yeah. did it feel <laughs> sending bananas home oh that was a good one that was my first big like solo welcome to the challenge right it was my <laughs> first elimination by myself against arguably the goat i i don't know some people now, different criteria, blah, blah, blah. He's Rushmore. As much as I don't like the guy, he's Rushmore. So, and I don't, it's not that I don't like him. I just, I don't know. I, I think if we met under different circumstances, then maybe we would get along. But that one, that was like an all-timer moment for the challenge for me, for sure. And that'll probably always be in my top five, just because it was the first one you know, against somebody that you had a problem with that's also, you know, a very powerful player in the game at that time and overall in the, in the overall landscape of the game. That's a big one. And then, you know, for, for a little while there, I started really thinking uh, I might be the legend killer until I went up against Wes in Champs vs. Pros. <laughs> you know, Velcro Russell didn't go well for your boy. <laughs> yeah, honestly, also, honestly, 
That's why, because then in double or in um, fuck the pasta gate. Uh, final reckoning. Final reckoning. Technically, I get a win over Zach, right? Because he. Yeah. Knows. So people forget this part of of that whole situation when they when they couldn't get Amanda and Zach couldn't get along, right? Mm-hmm. So me and Corey are behind, literally behind the scene, mm-hmm. right? Waiting to walk in. So we're hearing it all. <laughs> happen and we hear this big argument break out and we knew we were gonna get like i heard amanda say i think uh johnny and tony so i'm like fuck we're gonna i'm I'm gonna we're gonna do we're gonna go do it again i'm gonna gonna get to beat bananas again (laughs) i'm like yeah i'm like Corey, why am i gonna go we're gonna just go do it again and so then we came out and the first team was jose and dave on yes and then amanda and zach are standing there in their clothes still (laughs) <laughs> we're like all right well now i mean i'm feeling pretty good i'm like all right we get through this first one we got you know unprepared david and goliath over here this <laughs> we're gonna work them and and we did and zach mm-hmm. broke his nose so yeah i had gotten a win over johnny and then a win over zach and i was going to that west wrestle being like you know maybe and then i called the reason i called Durrell out was because i just looked up there and i was like well who's the best one well, and, and you, you also made up for that loss against Wes on double agents. Yeah. Then I got Wes. Then I took, yeah. see, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that I think about it, I might have to go after Darrell again. Yeah. You might have to go after Darrell next time you guys play. <laughs> yeah. I, I was thinking too, CT's on that list. And I was like, fuck, I was like, I don't want to ever do that. Right. Well, what if it's, you get lucky and it's puzzle, but then you got puzzle master versus puzzle master. I was going to say, who's, who's the real puzzle no, you, master here? You can't beat CT in anything. <laughs> <laughs> you can't beat him. You can try. You can try. Mm-hmm. You know, I've tried. All right. Well, here, here's the question then. Hall brawl, who wins, Fessy or CT? Ooh. Yeah, that one's solid. Um <laughs> So it, it depends on it, it. This makes a big difference. It depends on the hall brawl, right? Are we just talking old school one round winner takes it? Or yeah. Are we talking best of three? Old school. Are we talking, are there fucking explosions or the, what are the, you know, what we, we got to run back and forth like the Ambers did, the little bobbleheads running. The Ambers. <laughs> Which one? No, because they break it. They'll break it up. They'll make it different. So yeah, think, yeah, no, yeah, they do. I think in a classic where it was like was it Nelson Fessy style hall brawl. Right, right. Yes. Man, I that is that one is so crazy and so tough. But I gotta go with uh, because of his record. I'm gonna take Fessy, even though I'm a CT guy. Before I'm a Fessy guy, mm-hmm. I like them both. They're both they're both nice guys. Um, Fessy did that for 15 years. Right. Like he played football. Like he puts those pads on, he puts that helmet on, he feels comfortable. He feels good. That's like his safe place. And that's home. Yeah. There. He knows how to work in there. Plus you give him five inch reach advantage. If it really comes down to it and he's not slow, Mm-mm. right? I think him and CT are probably are tight in a foot race. Oh yeah, I'm sure. No one's blown the other one out of the water. So you add that reach in, we're hitting a buzzer. I'd probably go Fessy there. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that is a like, fair assessment. Yeah. yeah. I think I think CT'd be like a plus 165 dog. All right. I like it. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely a fair assessment. And and honestly, you know, we ask this question a lot. We see this question go around a lot. And, you know, people always have their side, but nobody ever really has a reason why. Made me Way think and, and even <laughs> asked for. Yeah. Way more drawn out. But I got there. No, I, I like it. it. With reasoning, though. We, yeah, we thought through it as a group. I have an easier question for you. What was the hard one? Oh, okay. Well, apparently none of them were. Not None of them were hard for the intellectual instigator. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. That was rude. I thought you would ask me a question before I left, and then you were like, fuck that question. I was like, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Right. This was the question I was going to ask before you left. I Excellent. thought the hall right, brawl was in. a harder one, but... No, that was. That was a tough question. I thought about it for five minutes. So, what house is easier to live in? The Are you the one or the challenge? Challenge. Easier? Yeah, yeah easier to live in. Yeah. Drama-wise, yeah. whatever. Yeah, well, just, I mean, Are You the One was great. It was super fun um, time, and I was I was happy to be there, but 
I don't recall you ever going to the boom boom room, did you? Oh yeah, I got in the boom boom room and yeah. uh, and failed to. Uh, I was gonna say I just wa- I just watched yeah. your season. I just yeah, finished it to earlier appear. today. <laughs> oh man, me. The cameras got me. <laughs> I started looking around. I was thinking, well, there's no way this is going to work. Uh, and it didn't. Um, well, yeah, I couldn't even imagine. Yeah, but, I, you know, I bounced back. I got a couple I got a couple uh, small bathing suits and, you know, everything's fine. <laughs> but I would say the challenge house is easier. A, I haven't lived in the area. The one house is meant as much. But that was 20 people. And it was a much smaller that particular house was was small we all lived in one room there's only one room so it's 20 people in, in literally one room oh wow really yeah that's how they were laid out is that there was just one big bedroom mattresses everywhere that yeah that everybody lived in oh see i yeah the ahead. challenge you get your own you get your own space this season uh in particular was you know we had a really we had a really good room me and chris doubled up on on rooming together it keeps you know being pretty good for both of us so it's mm-hmm. like why would we stop that but this is actually funny the way we got our room on this season is everyone runs in the house right and naturally i kind of look at ct and i'm like well we'll just go to the bar and let this kind of figure itself out He's like, yeah. <laughs> so we go to the bar and we're having a couple drinks and then we look inside this little room and i'm like there's a pool table in there like let's go play a game everyone's freaking out in there too and keep in mind only 17 of us came in right and there were there were 34 beds so the way it broke down was that there was eight beds in a different part of the house in a separate room right and yeah and then there was 26 in the main house so everyone was running around thinking that was the only place there was beds and we were fine with that we were gonna you know fit in wherever we, we could but then we go into the pool room and it's like you know heavens open up and it's this beautiful like exposed natural light clawfoot tub bedroom with four, with four beds in it and we're like oh well naturally we're being repaid for being patient so right. we had unanimously the best room in the house we eventually got kyle in there and then we had a like a a rotating fourth bed we were a hot commodity yeah. Amber wanted it. Amber, <laughs> I don't, Amber I don't. Was in there. Amber's in there for a little while. Um, before that, we had a couple other roommates that, uh, for whatever reason, we don't mention on this season, not <laughs> was in there. But yeah, that was a sick room. Challenge house every time. That's, that's actually funny that you say that because um, I know that they didn't show the, you know, the mad dash to go find the beds this season, which was something that the fans missed. However, I do find it funny that 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 happened to CT because I don't know how far back your um, challenge knowledge goes, but this happens to CT all the time. He always ends up being patient and waiting and then he ends up with the very best bedroom in the entire house. And it's so funny to watch it go down every season. And then of course, here we are happened again. (laughs) That's interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that was his move, but I adopted, I guess, uh, a few moves from CT that being one of them and then not it being another not Where it I yep just regularly say <laughs> not it not it <laughs> and that means someone else deal with this because it's not i'm not going to <laughs> that's the number one thing i love it so you said that the challenge house was you know more that you enjoy that house a little bit more so have you ever considered doing any other reality shows like survivor maybe even big brother survivors are hard now uh, under the right circumstances, I would consider Big Brother because of its special place in my heart, in my in my in my comebacks heart. Right? Without without Big Brother there, we don't have such valuable sayings as "What's eight times nine? If you're jealous of my sweatsuit, you can you ask, can to, ask borrow to borrow it. it. <laughs> those, are cla- those are instant classics. So, they literally get quoted in our team like daily. Yeah, that, uh, Big Brother sucks VIP lounge. Like those, I would just just for the, uh, I guess, complexity of it all, mm-hmm. I would consider Big Brother, but it wouldn't be, I could never do a full 
they really do it over there. I think it's 99 days. It's yeah. It, yeah. It, they, that's so long. Yeah. I couldn't imagine that. That's that so one long. is definitely long and it's, it's really heavy too, because you, you know, there's, there's three episodes a week. Um, and then you also have live feeds. So, you know, the fans can watch you 24 seven live, um, yeah. which is a totally different experience than I know anyone in the challenge has ever had, obviously, except for the big brother players. Um, but I've just always thought, you know, with your social game, your mental game, that you would absolutely kill at something like Big Brother. So, yeah, that's that interesting to know that you would actually be open to it anyway. I actually don't think I'd do well at all. I think they'd probably get the guy that said Big Brother sucks out right now. <laughs> well, yeah, that's if they know, if they recognize <laughs> yeah, you, you're like, screwed. <laughs> I feel like wait, wait, totally you look familiar. <laughs> that voice sounds really familiar. <laughs> yeah. Right? They're like interrogating me. They're like, read this line. Yeah, that one, that one's really intense. And it, it's funny. I've noticed this bond between people from Big Brother and also people from, um, oh, fuck, uh, when they lived in the bunker. Total madness. Total madness. Total madness. And even from the people, the bond last season was all the people that lived in the room that we called the barn. And it was one room. I think it had 12 beds in it it smelt like shit and they all had one bathroom and they were all crammed in there and they formed this like bond of no one else knows what we've gone through and i think there's a little bit of that in the big brother people because it's so hardcore you're not you're not drinking beers right you're always on camera you have to be very mindful of what you're saying and that can be problematic for some of those people who just fucking send it, right? It it has been problematic for a lot of people in Big Brother. Yeah, so past. that must that must get to you. Um, I would be fine with that part. Watch me all day. Like, we, you already are. You think you're the only people tuning into this feed? Wrong. U.S. government <laughs> absolutely tuning in. Um, your phone, you got a little spy device in your pocket at all times. Like, that mm -hmm. wouldn't bother me at all. But yeah, the no beer... That would be tough. And, yeah. And then they make you like sleep in a bean bag or something and eat like dog food. Yeah. If you're, if you're a have not, they have a special have not room that is miserable. You yeah. can only eat slop for a week and you can only take cold showers for a week. Yeah. And you got to live in there in a little dog bed. That's not really, I'd just be like, no, vote me out. <laughs> One season, the beds were literally like ice blocks. <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> What's the, uh, the worst daily that you've ever done or scariest? The worst one? <laughs> I'll tell you, here's a pertinent or not pertinent, but relevant answer. <laughs> That what we just did, jumping into that water and um, swimming through the cave when Tommy ended up on the beach naked. Yeah. That was no joke. People think the way they, that that got played out, that it was like, that was not gnarly as fuck. That was, we're choppy ocean water, real choppy. And the cave was narrow, maybe 10, 15 yards. So you're moving in there when oh. I don't know if anyone's been in a current like that, where when it goes into a cave, it's also coming out at mm -hmm. the same time. So depending upon where you are, you'll be getting pushed back and then going forward. And if you're not timing it right and you're just trying to barrel through, you lose a lot of energy and you get very tired and then you're susceptible to go into the walls. So right. that one was really, really tricky. Like I was, I took in a lot of water that day. A lot of people took in a lot of water that day. But the cars and vendettas, I knew that was sketchy. Yeah, I that one like, was scary. I was like, okay, we're gonna be, we're jumping from car to car. Like that's like kind of lit, okay. And then- The Nelson, one where Leroy hit the Nelson, water? So yeah. Nelson and Zach, Nelson and Zach go first and they break through the glass. Yes, I, I was shocked there was still glass in the cars, first of all. They put, they, they blocked it out the windows they i think put wood in the windows that actually ended up making it more dangerous because there was no give right so at least if there was glass there maybe you get cut but at least you go in a little right. bit and you're up there the wood was just like dump and so that's what happened to Leroy. he slipped and oh. jumped and he, when he clipped it he just you know fell down and he was 
lifeless down there, face down. Yeah. I was like, God damn. And then I went right after and, you know, I wasn't there for the Tony incident, but obviously that one would be sketchy. But I don't think people really truly recognize the stress that comes with potentially getting very injured in these competitions. And then also you have to balance that. And for people that aren't complex thinkers, I don't even know that. I don't even understand how, first of all, no one on that show can do math and they're supposed to analyze these feelings. Like it blows my mind. I'm like, how are you, this is what we're dealing with is so complex. And like, you don't understand basic arithmetic. You stand no chance. How are you still alive? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, cause what we're dealing with is really intense. The house, the challenges, the missions, the pressure, the money, like all that stuff, you bundle that up. I love it. I thrive off it. I love that. I understand the complexities of it, the levels of it, the, the reasons why people may go harder in a certain situation or they can't turn it off when the horn blows. I'll turn that right. shit right the fuck off. <laughs> I, thankfully, I am a person of probability, right? And if it's like, all right, I may not win this challenge. I'm not going to throw it. I'm going to try, but I'm going to try to also not get hurt because if I get hurt, I'm out of the game, period. And right. that eliminates a chance that I would have had at winning something that was more in my, in my strength. Right. Some yeah. Hear that horn go and they just black out their head spins around in a full 360 and they just start freaking out. And you can't like, to me, to have longevity in this game, you can't, you can't be that way. You have to be more strategic And those players the Wesses, the CTs, the people I've mentioned uh, on the male side, analyze a game, determine, you know, the best angle at it and the safest angle at it because survive in advance doesn't just mean don't get eliminated. It means don't get injured. No, I, I agree with that. And I, you know, I, I noticed that, you know, there are certain people who will hold, hold back on certain missions or certain challenges or, you know, whatever they're being called on whatever season it is. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> Fair. keep up with all the Fair. names, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. agents and missions and agencies. And I, I don't know anymore, but I do notice that there are people who, who seem to go all out on everything. I mean, we saw, you know, unfortunately we saw Anissa get hurt in that, you know, on that wall and, you know, and that was really unfortunate. It, it, it sucks because, you know, I, I love her. I think that she is a really special person and she brings a really unique side to this show and it sucks to see her get her and get, and get sent home that way. Yeah, that one was, that was tough. That was, uh, that was an example of exactly what we're talking about, which is somebody that, and I love Anissa. We called each other Max for a reason, right? We're Intel people. We're yep. in the band. tech team. <laughs> yeah. And that doesn't mean she is not an epic badass that is very capable of these things. Oh, yeah. But she said herself in that interview, there was, she wanted to win for Logan, right? Right. You gotta, you have to focus here. You can look out for other people, you can help other people. But especially in that situation, like my ass going over that wall. Are you kidding me? I saw a manual jump off the top of the wall and like barrel roll under yes. the net. I was like, okay, that clearly I'm not going to beat him. Right. right? <laughs> so let my ass just, I was, I, I literally yell during the mission. It's a turtle race. I, yes. Yep. Yes. <laughs> I have that clip in my video. <laughs> like, I am literally yelling. It's like I'm saying to my friends that are doing this with me, it's a turtle race, boys. Like this is muddy. It's slippery. There's literal bombs going off. Mm -hmm. Like if you fall off this wall, you're done. Yeah. So I understand we all want to get that edge. But for me, that edge is staying in the game and staying healthy and being able to dominate at something that I feel like is in my wheelhouse. But I'm not beating a manual or Fessy or CT or Corey <laughs> or Nelson, I'm not, you know, right. I knew where my chance was and it was at the math problem and I'll ca I'll make up some time, but I can't even get to the math problem. If I fucking twist my ankle coming off this tree. It's like so, Tetris wall. Yeah. It was, <laughs> yeah. 
I don't know why I called it a tree, weird tree, but yeah, Anissa, <laughs> I, I, it sucked to see her go out that way. She did give it her all, and you know, props to that. But I think she'll dial it back a little bit on the next one that maybe is a little sketchy. Like you said, she has to learn to do it for herself and, you know, not necessarily for her partner or, you know, for to prove us wrong. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she's got to. I'm like, dude, you're you're a beast. Like, yes, you are. You just have to see it in herself now, you know, and recognize that. But since we were actually just talking about Emmanuel, I wanted to ask you, were there any rookies this season who really surprised you that you think would, you know, be good for future seasons to keep returning? Yeah, I mean, Logan and Emmanuel are no-brainers. Emmy is a no-brainer. Controversial opinion. Big Gabo guy. (laughs) I love it. Pump Gabo, yes. Gabo. Huge Gabo guy. Dude, that was the most beautiful moment you guys did for him, by the way, when he got eliminated. That, like, it was such a hallmark moment. I loved it. One more time. It was beautiful. (laughs) If you don't follow Gabo on Instagram, I believe it's pumped underscore Gabo. It is, yes. Don't quote me on that. Is it? Yeah. Yes. Do yourself a favor because the kid is a legend. Yeah. He, he, He posted a photo of a kid. And he goes, it's like he's trying to do like climate change awareness. And so he's like, we, he posts a photo of this kid. He's like, we want, he's like, this kid wants to, wants a future. He wants to party all day, go to raves and like just all this stuff. And he's like, we can't rob him of his future. And it's just so... It's like, I love that type of shit where it's like, you want to know what? That future is just as important as the person that wants to be a gardener. Right? Yes. It's like, you both get, you are both entitled to your futures as long as you're not hurting anybody else. And Gabo is a, a really fun and uh, smarter than he looks uh, in, in emotional intelligence. He does get it. He reads between the lines. He understands uh, some of the complexities actually better than than some other people and he he's one I'd have back I think Coriel is another one. Oh yes I love it. him Coriel came correct and in a if he was in a different position in that game he would have been uh, forced to be reckoned with and I would say I just keep naming like it's like every single guy but if Huey in that absolute cannon of a behind on the screen like also, I don't want to give any spoilers about like what happened. So this is just based off what you guys have seen so far. Huey is a legend. He's one of the funniest guys. I dislike Berna. I'm just not a Berna guy. I think Berna's good for the show. I think she's so just Berna that. <laughs> Did you know she's in the circus? Yeah, I mean, if I was a cat, if I was a casting person, I'm casting Berna. At, at least one more time because she is just there is no character there there is no i'm supposed to be this way or supposed to be that way and she's just she is hashtag the burn and uh <laughs> yeah honestly i'd like to see her back even though i don't think we get along right right well that's that's good and actually so speaking of that kind of want to touch back to uh you know we talked about dial and we talked about dial stand a little bit um, at the beginning of the uh, session here. And uh, so I know you're all about Dial. The fans are all about Dial. They're loving it right now. However, we did have a fan submitted question that they were wondering, are you really turning Kyle down to be Godfather or what's going on? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I want to be as, as clear as possible. I am not the Godfather to uh, crew okay great name very happy for kyle um you know and his family love kyle big dial guy uh you know i see that relationship being pretty one-sided uh, to, yeah. to, to speak about it in challenge terms crew's not offering me a lot you know <laughs> Uh, I feel like there'll be a lot of take there, not a ton of give. And I don't really sign up for those type of alliances. So it's a hard no. Love it. 
<laughs> so what does that mean for you and Kyle moving forward? Because we know that you don't like working with parents. So is dial over moving forward or are you going to give him a chance? Well, no. So, you know, Chris is a dad, a good, a damn good dad. Yes, he is. Darrell, Darrell's a dad. I've, I've, de I've dealt with some dads and some moms. Well, yeah, that's know. true. I I've teamed up with any moms, but uh, yeah, de I've definitely, I, listen, Kyle, the thing, and I got to clear this up because everyone's always like, you hate children. Like, no, I don't, like, I don't hate children. I just, here's the thing about parents not children, parents, mm -hmm. in a competitive game show with a million dollars on the line. Mm -hmm. There is a built-in fuck you button that can get pressed at any time that is non-negotiable and you cannot argue your way out of it. And they, it's the <laughs> ultimate excuse. And it is, well, I got a family. I'm doing gotta, it for my kids. <laughs> I got to do what's best for my family. Okay, Corey. So, so <laughs> fuck you. And they hit the button. And they hit the fucking button. They hit the fuck you button. I'm a parent. And then you literally have to stand there and just be like, ah, the future of your children are me. Right. And it's like, <laughs> you're screwed. Right. So I just don't like the double standard of it all. And I would rather it be people just be like, and that really is in their head though. Like if you're, if you're a parent, there isn't anything you wouldn't do for your child. Right. My mom yeah. Tells me this all the time. There's nothing mm -hmm. I wouldn't do for you. So if you take that mindset and you put it on a reality show built with alliances where there are literally things that people should not do, that doesn't add up. Right. Right. If, if you get to that point where it's like, well, I, sh I really shouldn't do this. This person has had my back all the way through. There's going to be that little person, that little child on your ear saying, do it for me, mom. <laughs> Right. And then you just do it. You can't, it controls you. Controls yeah, that's it. <laughs> and you just do it and it's done. Yep. <laughs> so, it's not the end of dial. Dial will live forever. Dial forever. Dial forever. I love it. I love hashtag it. Hashtag dial forever. Yes. That's going to be so, our new hashtag. I, I have a question. I got a little shameless plug for you. How did Devonware come about? Oh, look at you. You just flexing on me? Um, I thought you were gonna prep the. I thought you were gonna rep the OnlyFans, so I was getting my bicep ready. No, you're talking about. Oh, where... oh, we'll we'll get to that. Oh, we don't, can, don't we can rep the OnlyFans too. It's fine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> hold on there. <laughs> we're chatting about where Devin Walker. Um, where Devin Walker is, is is very. It's interesting how cool it looks to me, right? Because this was literally me. People, just I sound like the most basic influencer. So I get a lot of messages about this. So, you know, I wanted to make a video. Uh, but actually, people were like, dude, put some some of the shit that you say on a shirt and I'll buy it. Yes. Um, I'm not going to make any money on that. I don't it, like that is not what it's designed to do. What it's designed to do is put funny things that I've said on T-shirts that are comfortable for people to wear that are also kind of evergreen. Right. So like you don't necessarily need to know follow the show to wear an i am an introvert t-shirt right so i like trolling my castmates when they say dumb shit <laughs> i'm gonna put it on a shirt and send it to them because that's <laughs> fucking funny did you send one to fessy yes josh got a 72 shirt that was a yes that's a 72 yes. on it and yes. fessy got an i'm an introvert t-shirt right yes i love it uh, amanda amanda might have got a chaos queen t-shirt because i wasn't going to make a shirt that said bottom bunk horse Okay, so I had to go. So I had to go with the next best thing. Those are her words, not mine. She was like, "Make a bottom bunk horse shirt." I was like, "No, not doing that." Also, big Amanda guy, love Amanda. Thinks she's so. Good. I'm one of the few that love her. I get oh, so I much hate for it. Love, I love Amanda. No, fuck that. Amanda's hilarious. Amanda's one of the funniest people I've ever done reality TV with. And of course, like everybody else, she has her tipping point. And oh yeah, Amanda's a mom that I that I've you know, teamed up with. She's great, but- But have uh, you worked with her? Yeah, I mean, she was in the Vet Alliance very much so. She was- Yeah, Amanda, I guess that's true, yeah. Behind the scenes, actually, for a little while, were a part of the glue because she was attached to me, who was attached to Josh. She was attached to Josh. She was attached to Nelson. I was attached to Nelson. So right. we, had, we had a thing going inside the thing um, 
that I I fuck with Amanda heavy. I think she's a really good person. But yeah, she got a she she's gonna get a uh, a chaos queen, you know. And it's That's awesome. Just go to weirdevanwalker.com or drop. I'm about to drop some fire new designs. Fall line coming out. Well, we saw that you already have a uh, number one draft pick up. I saw that uh, last week. I haven't seen that yet. I saw that one up I, yeah. when I looked on the website last week. Um, number one draft pick is up there. And uh, if we'll I be... love the design, I put it on the whole shirt. If I don't love the design, I just put it on the little square right here. That's how, you'll know. <laughs> That's how you'll know. Here's what I really want for that company, though, too, is I want to just continue to send shirts to people that do dumb shit. <laughs> and I do dumb shit sometimes and I say dumb shit and then I put it on a shirt. I think it's funny and I think that it's like a funny thing. As like I could just put my face on a shirt. People bought those and I was like, you know, tripping one day and I thought to myself, someone's walking around with your face on their shirt and like <laughs> that is not it. You can't do that anymore. And then you're like, well, what else can I do? Dumb shit that I say. <laughs> well, where's the uh, seltzer sister come from? A uh, spritzer sister. Spritzer, my bad. Spritzer. Yep. Spritzer's sister. So that's actually from Vendetta's. I believe it was Marie, mm -hmm. uh, Kayla, okay. Cam, and Sylvia. Uh, and I think Shane was probably in there. It was like kind of the original Lavender Ladies, but without Amanda. And I guess Ashley, so not. But they would just, you know, you get those girls a couple of, a couple of seltzers couple of glasses of vino <laughs> good night irene right <laughs> so i think one night i just came home and i was like it, you know they wouldn't give us any more beer or something and i'm like just because the fucking spritzer sisters decided to get wasted at dinner we can't have any beer and then that's we called started calling them the spritzer sisters, spritzer sisters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. well the uh, a lot of the female admins on our group want that shirt so that's why i had to ask oh yeah yeah that, yeah, yeah. yeah that shirt's a heater man that's that's just for anybody honestly that likes to go out and mix wine and seltzer and have themselves a nice you know refreshing spritzer maybe it's 75 by the pool maybe it's 45 and during the winter and you're alone watching you know the notebook i'm not sure i don't know <laughs> either way that's awesome how was it um you were you were with wes uh, was it two years ago, a year and a half ago, uh, when he was in the house having a bunch of you over there and his Patreon? How, what was that like? And what, I mean, you guys were doing community service as well. Uh, can you talk on that a little bit? Yeah, Friends and Benefits, great project. That Wes, yeah, Wes is a serial entrepreneur. He's a he's one of the, the the better minds that I've met through these experiences, uh, and someone that I can count on to give me honest critiques and advice on things. Um, and it was a successful project. It's just, you know, with Wes, you can start a little seed and he has a u very unique ability to file all those seeds and at the right time, pull the seed out and plant it and grow it. Uh, and that's what he did with Friends and Benefits. It was like something we had talked about a few times uh, leading up to that and it just happened to be the right time at the right place and someone like Wes doesn't like to not be busy I love not be busy favorite thing doing nothing I like playing golf smoking cigs hanging out drinking beers and I, mean, I don't think he smokes cigs but he likes all those things but he also likes to accomplish things I only like to accomplish things so that I cannot accomplish anything for a longer period of time <laughs> that's what i like to do in different strokes right but he likes, yeah. to always, he likes to always be doing something and this was something you know that he wanted to do and that he um that he asked me to be a part of and i was happy to do it and we to be the one of the first of that uh series we were out there we were lighting it up doing community service feeling good out in kansas city uh tough loss last night for the chiefs mm. oh that's my team Oh, is it? Yeah, tough L. Yeah, that's a tough L. I saw a Falcons flag in your buddy's office. Also, shout out, what was his name, Matt? Rick. 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 
Shout out he's to actually, Rick. He's actually listening in right now. He's not yeah. on screen, but he that's uh that's my husband, and he is now home and he's now listening in. So you can talk all your shit about the Falcons. Excellent. Now. <laughs> well, no, shout out, shout out Rick for A, the office call in. Big flex, loved it, super into it. And then also the Falcons flag. The the shameless Falcons flag. I was like, what do, I was like, where is this coming from? That's gonna be a tough season for you, Rick. I'm sorry. Oh, um, it's it, it's a tough season. Look, I uh, I tell my buddies, <laughs> yeah, I tell my buddies I'm a Falcons fan because it teaches you to deal with disappointment. <laughs> that one was that 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 uh that Super Bowl man. That was that was a big. Oh, one. Was- it, it's it's the thing nightmares are made of. I've got a ball of whiskey <laughs> that I still haven't touched since that night. Yeah. Well, you know, unlike uh, football. The challenge is a little bit more controlled by one person, right? And that's, uh, I'm trying this season to just do what I can do to increase my chances at winning. Um, that is kind of the generic answer to a lot of the questions that, that people have for me is like, why are you doing the things that you're doing? Short answer, to increase it, my chances of winning. That's why I'm doing most of the things that I'm doing. and. Although they may seem reckless at times or they may seem too reserved at times, it is what I believe to be in my best interest at increasing the probability of me winning. Because it's a game, right? It's a show, (laughs) but it's a game, and I like to win games. I don't play games to play them. I play games to win, and I want to win the game. And so I have to look at it that way and be objective, as difficult as it is sometimes, to... Uh, take emotions out of it and to uh, de-escalate situations. All that, all that type of stuff is these calloused challenge hands have learned, right? Like I, I fucking cut my finger a thousand times before I figured out how to hold the knife. And that's no, nothing that I'm doing out there is it, that I'm doing without thinking about it. Yeah, no, I, I, I love it. Really quick, I don't want to take up too much more um, of your time, but I do have a couple of questions that major fans of yours in our group, uh, we gave them an opportunity to kind of submit a question or two if they wanted to. And so the first one is from Shannon, and she is wondering, which one of your enemy turned friend are you most shocked by and why? Well, which one of my frenemies do I (laughs) like the most? Uh, (laughs) Man, who did I... Dave, Tori. Okay, what is with the Dave thing? Can you explain this to me or is this a secret? Easy, no, not a secret. Okay. Um, In double agents so that we'll get to the Dave. I'm gonna answer the question and that question all in one answer. Perfect. We started out, right? Little known fact, I'm the reason that Tori tried out for Are You The One. Oh, okay. So we've, we've had this thing happening now, even unbeknownst to me for a while, where we are like somehow reality TV connected. And it was just, again, wrong place, wrong time for both of us, I think, on second chances. And we didn't like each other. I, I thought that, you know, she was not really doing what I was hoping. And, you know, she thought that I was just a dick, which I was, for to be fair. Um, <laughs> but I think... And we both go to the final in that show, that the lost show. No one's ever seen it. We both go to the final, I win, right? So like, in my mind, I'm scoring one in my little lane. <laughs> Turns out that scorecard never even needed to exist because Tori is another person that not only is it beneficial to have in any sort of competition game show because she is an absolute freak when it comes to competition. She yeah. goes so hard. She is not scared. There's nothing that's stopping her. She's going to, you're going to get a hundred and fucking 50 from her every single time. But also she's really cool and funny and creative mm-hmm. and all these things that I, you know, like in friends and people, she was checking all those boxes. Plus we're going to live in a house together for three months. Right. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, yeah, it's going to be obviously better for us not to play on opposite teams. And I think she thought that last season in Double Agents, 
And I still was like, it just got to a point where it was her or me. And then um, obviously I pick her as my partner. And I think right. for her at that point, it was done. But I'm a dickhead. So I carried it <laughs> further than that. And I apologized to her for that. I was like, listen, you know, I should have trusted you and let it die. I'm sorry. Let's just see, you know, what's good uh, moving forward as allies in this game. And it has, to this point, worked out for us. Tori is, in my opinion, I didn't play, I haven't played with a lot of these people, but I think Tori's probably top 10 for sure, all time. Mm -hmm. Talking all time. I maybe would go as, as high as top seven. Yeah, I <laughs> I agree. Um, and, and Without a ring, without a ring. It's yeah right yeah no yeah. i i agree 100 percent. tori is one like she's probably my favorite female competitor um on the show i absolutely love her and just so you know rick just got so excited um <laughs> tori is his number one he that's his his favorite competitor that's his girl crush that's his that's his, his everything so, <laughs> yeah it's his hall pass <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I he, missed he's, the Dave, I missed the Dave aspect of this question. Oh yeah. So on, yeah. On double agents. Yeah. Uh, I dress like a dad. I don't really put a ton of effort in. I actually started getting my swag back. I got some pinky rings. I got a watch I've been wearing. Nice. Um, yeah. I have some cool, uh, stuff that I wear to like spice it up. So that's cool. Uh, would recommend it by the way, it does work. People are into it, but <laughs> I, I pretty much dress like a dad. Uh, and like, I play golf and have a fucking pontoon boat. And like, I do like do all this shit that like old people that drink beer do. Right. So, <laughs> Tori was just like, dude, you're like Dave. Like, you're just like Dave, like, oh, okay. you know, like Dave, yep. like, just a generic guy that looks like me. That is like calling like, somebody Bob. Yeah. It's like, Hey Dave. So then yeah. I was like, fuck you, you're Dave. And so then I called her Dave. <laughs> And because uh, I was like, yeah, that's yeah. funny that you're saying that about me because you actually look like Dave. Uh, and so then that's it. Oh, my God. That's great. I love it. <laughs> I love it. All right. So then the uh, second fan question that we have submitted in here is from Aaron. And he wants to know if you still talk to Rashida or anyone from AYTO. I haven't talked to Rashida in a while. Um, love Rashida. Yeah. I think she's an amazing person. She is. Yeah. I've fallen out of touch. Mm -hmm. But I do talk to some people from Are You The One Season 3 because we are the most successful season of, the, of Are You The One ever, and it's not close. It's not mm -hmm. close. There isn't a close second, right? Maybe you could say four, maybe, right? Maybe. Got Tori and right. Julia and Morgan's, you know, successful. Uh, maybe you could say them. Still no. We've got... <laughs> we've, we've got... <laughs> Yeah, we've got myself. We've got Nelson. Let's not forget yep. about Nelly T. Nelly, Nelly T. Hunter. Talk to Nelson all the time. Actually just lived with him. Just lived with Nelson. You know, right. I'm not going to tell you how long. Hashtag no spoilers. But I right. You know? <laughs> he's, he's a roommate of mine. Right? I love it. Yeah. Across, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, he lives across the hall. Hunter, Brittany. Yep. Manda. Uh, Cheyenne, just talked to Cheyenne the other day, obviously. I was going to say Team uh, Princess. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Team Princess forever. Still the best team I've ever been a part of. Still uh, my favorite. Some iconic moments, you know, between the two of us. Just really talk was. about yin and yang, you know, <laughs> just to get it. To, yeah. The, two of, the fucking two of us. We, they, we were so meant to be there that we lost. And for absolutely no reason at all, they said, come on back. That and then People and then you're just the luckiest happened. guy in the world pulling every white skull every single time you walked into that thing like just the, the luckiest the guy in the world well i'll tell you what cheyenne's a very good person and she probably had a fucking lot of good karma on her side because I'm sure. uh it wasn't coming from my end at that, <laughs> at that point in my life and and she guided us to uh you know a bronze medal so I'm very was, happy with that. And I was really happy to share it with her. And she is somebody, we don't talk a ton, but she, you know, Corey, uh, I was just seeing, saw Corey and he was uh, chatting with her. So I got to say hi. She's just a great person. I'm, I, I love being a part of that cast. And obviously Chuck from Chuck and Big D, I talked to Chuck time and time. Um, 
it was just an epic cast. It was really, it really was a, a really cool group of people. It's cool to hear that you still keep in touch with some of, you know, even the AYTO people that you don't play the challenge with. So I just I got to touch on it. When you when you were talking to Fessy on the reunion, you talked to me, well, you finished last. You know who or I finished last. You know who else finished last? You. You're no better than me. But listen, Fessy has finished fourth. You have finished third. You're better. <laughs> You're better. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, and you got You were on the podium. He's never been on the podium. Exactly. He, yes. He finished fourth and then didn't finish at all. Yeah. No, it's just like, Wouldn't he? Quit. He quit one. He quit yep. one. Ah, yeah. See, you heard he it. Quit. He agrees he quit. with me. He quit. Everybody heard it. Yes. He yep. quit. Oh no. Yeah. Oh. I'm told. I'm told Fessy this. If your ass eats all that food faster, if you say Casey keep eating, right? Mm -hmm. Your team finishes before another team. They likely. Pull Casey, pull the yep. dude from the losing team and say, girl that just lost, you didn't actually lose. Your partner's with Fessy Go. Right, exactly. You never know what happens. You in never these. know. We've seen Likely. people get carried. Yep. Yeah, we've, yeah, we've seen people get carried. And then there was an opportunity for another partner switch as soon as that puzzle and the math thing was done. You, you know, so I mean, you yeah, even, even if they hadn't have made the cut, you still don't quit. You don't stop. Yep. You just keep going. And how do you not only quit, but you quit right in front of TJ. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. he's, I think he, I think he, uh, I think he regrets that one. And that was in a, that was another one of those impulsive moves, but you know, I care so much more about the win and the title that comes along with that than I do about the money. Right. I'm not fucking balling, but I'm chilling. I'm happy yeah. with where I'm at. Money would be nice. I like money. Everyone likes money, right? <laughs> some cool stuff with it. Help some people have a, you know, play better golf courses. But it's the win for me, right? And right. there isn't anything, there isn't any situation that I would go into, partner down or not, that I'm not finishing the drill on. And I, I understand people say it's easy to say from here, but just point to one situation ever in my challenge career, or if you know me in my life, when I haven't finished the fucking drill. If I sign up for it, if I do it, if I say I'm gonna do it, I fucking finish it. it or you have to tell me that I can't, the time's up, whatever. Right. I'm trying to finish it. So I've told him several times, especially here, the challenge gods favor finishers. Mm -hmm. finish the thing you got there eat the fucking food you don't need a knee to eat yeah and even if right. you're gonna lose just eat the damn food just shut up and eat it. it you don't know what's gonna happen after that checkpoint you don't know any of that stuff and likely something was gonna happen where it was like okay casey can't go anymore but you you gave an out because you just quit Right. And that that I'm like, it, he, he knows this is any this is nothing that I wouldn't say to his face. Right. Oh, and, I, and, and I have said it to him. And again, I think Fessy's a beast. He's, he's a really good competitor to finals two seasons. It's like that's I don't know if I could be in that situation and look to my left and have somebody calling me a pussy and still not finish. Leroy. I'm going to finish <laughs> despite you. You call me a pussy. It's fucking on. Excuse my language, but it's on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Leroy, you know, with the, the, the most under underrated, I, you, y'all thought I was an instigator. The most underrated instigator ever, in my opinion, is Leroy. Corey is stuff we is don't see appropriately rated instigator, which is in my mm -hmm. opinion, uh, gold or silver all time. I have never seen anybody instigate situations like Corey can because he gets a lot of respect and people like him and they and they um, they really care what he thinks about them. And so he can really he can really send you in one direction or another. Leroy, that, that double agents had that whole game in his pocket. He had that whole game in his pocket. He had people voting for him while he was burning. He had people doing this, doing that. He saw every angle. He was sober for the season, so that probably helped too. Mm -hmm. But he he sat down <laughs> and he, him and Cam went over every angle and they they were doing fucking trigonometry in that bed. I swear to God. And he <laughs> was able to pin some people in some different places. And that was one of the ways that he did it. I'm surprised 
Fessy didn't take the bait there because everyone else took the bait every single time. Like Leroy was like, you know, kind of like calling people out left and right. And it, it worked, man. He, he had, I'm happy. I'm happy for CT and Amber, but it, who was it? It was Nani and Leroy. Nani and Leroy. Yeah. Oh man. That would have been. been, you know what? And I just, I just want to say, and my team knows that, you know, above all, my number one is CT. I'm a huge CT stan. I run fan groups for him. I make highlight videos of him. Like, I, I love CT. But even I would have really loved to see Leroy and Nani take that take that final. Oh, yeah. It would have been amazing to see Leroy win on his on his retirement season. Um, and just to see Nani finally get that win. She's come so close so many times. And I don't care what people say about her. She's a solid competitor. Um, and I really enjoy her on the show. I enjoy what she brings to it. And, you know, it would have just been really awesome to see them win. Yeah, I mean, 100 percent. She is, you know, Nani's a legend in this game. There's really no other word you can use to describe it. Mm-hmm. Um, she, you know, she hasn't gotten that elusive win, but I, I believe that she's better now than she ever has been. She thinks she's a stronger competitor than she ever has been. And I really like her and Casey together. I think that they're genuine in their relationship and they feel mutual about each other. Uh, I see a lot of relationships that you're like, well, that's probably just horseshit. <laughs> there seems, seems to me to be, um, genuine and, you know, that's another absolute monster is Casey. Right. Don't fucking sleep on her. Don't sleep on Casey. That knee is repaired. <laughs> she's ready to go. Repaired. And she's with Emmanuel. And they just won the last challenge. And she is an analyzer. She is high level. Her and Nani together, that's that's a powerhouse. I was going to say, so, that's, a, that's a team. That's a team to work together. I that's love it. Power, that's a powerhouse. Yeah. Yeah, we'll All right, one last happens. one last question before she does her thing, because you touched on this earlier and you wanted to flex. So your your only fans is it speedo on or off? The ladies want to know. Uh, well, I mean, it's not speedo <laughs> all the way on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's peach season here in Massachusetts. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Peach season year round. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I th- that's another thing that I was like, I just decided to say, I get to do everything that I want to do that doesn't hurt anybody else. Yeah. And uh, I don't have any problem with, with uh, making somebody's day, you know? Yes. And, and, the, and I have never felt more loved. I've never felt more appreciated. We know, we know I'm not coming in with the six abs, right? That's not my game. That's <laughs> not my style. But I've never felt like, that. you know, my fans on there, I love them. I tell them all the time. I absolutely fucking love them. And they've made uh, my life so much less stressful. Well, that's um, good. And, I, and I, I fucking am a big advocate for everybody that's in a position where we put so much on the line, we do so much stuff. And it's like, of course, there's a reward. There's this, there's that. But it's nice to have like a literal, actual reward, which is the people will pay to see your butt. And that's chill. (laughs) And that's chill. And I refuse (laughs) to believe that it isn't. And that's the that hill I will die on. What's up, Audra? It's your boy, Devin Walker. I'm coming at you live with a happy Mother's Day charity cameo booked for you by Josh. He wants to say thank you. He wants to say thank you for everything that you do for your family. He wants to say thank you for being the inspirational, beautiful, amazing, powerful woman that you are. And he wants to say if he could do it all over again, he would pick you every fucking time, Audra, because you are that amazing. And this Mother's Day, I want it to be the best Mother's Day ever. Because although it may seem like some of the things that you do fly under the radar, they don't get noticed, wrong, they are appreciated. And this message is to convey to you how appreciated you truly are. Everything that you do, everything that you do, it's appreciated. I appreciate you, and I don't even know you. I love you. I miss you already. Happy Mother's Day. I hope it's the best one you've ever had in your whole life, and I hope that next year is even better than this year. Audra, you're the fucking best. 
Dude, the delivery amazing. on that cameo is fire. That is one of my I favorite cameos. That. It is the best. And I appreciate it. Every Mother's Day is like, oh, here, it's a re-gift. No. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, the thing is, like... Hey, don't say that. You're going to give Rick freaking ideas. He's just going to start re-gifting the same cameos to me all the time. Sometimes I hit a flow state. You want to know what's funny is that cameo was actually done in front of the house. That we filmed um, friends with benefits with. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Oh, how cute. Yeah. That's awesome. That's and awesome. I believe, and I believe, based on the shirt that I'm wearing, that it was Cinco de Mayo. Because I think I was, I had done a, a Cinco de Mayo party. It would have made, you know, when's, when's Mother's Day? It's around, it's in May, right? Yeah, it's in May. Yeah. A little bit later. It's like May, like 13th, 12th or 13th, something like that. So yeah, that would have so been think, like. I think my guy was ahead of the curve. I think he knew, I think he had it lined up. <laughs> That's tight. Hey, this has been great, guys. It's been very fun. Thank you for having me. Um, I've got to go in like five minutes. So yeah, I'm. I'm gonna else? get one. one I'm gonna get thing. one last thing from you, okay. really quick. We actually have somebody on our team who is a ridiculous Devin fan, and it is her birthday tomorrow. She was too oh, nervous yeah. to actually be on here, um, hosting and interviewing you. She was a little too nervous for that. Um, but I wanted to know if maybe we could bring her on real quick. And if you could just tell her happy birthday, it will literally melt her and make her laugh. Get her ass in here. All right. I just sent her the message, told her to get in here. She's going to go. Get her, ass, get her ass in here. And the, what I mean, that's a loose five minutes. I really have seven minutes. But yeah, bring her in. And then maybe if she does have a couple of questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I don't want to rush off. Oh, she's connecting audio. It's a big moment. Hello? Let's see. <laughs> Oh, God. Hi. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you, Lindsay. We can't see you, though. No, you can't see me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm a little oh. nervous. Oh, that's okay. Okay. We're I'm, doing... I'm kind of freaking out right now. She's being we're doing, shy. We're doing audio. We're doing audio only. Okay. Well, hey, first, Lindsay, first things first. Happy birthday. What's the year? 1990. Thank you. 1990. So what's that mean? 31? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the big three one hashtag prime number birthday. <laughs> Everybody is the best on their prime number year. Take it from me. I've been 31. It's lit. <laughs> so I hope you have a great day. Um, Thank you. And happy birthday tomorrow, right? Not today. <laughs> yeah. tomorrow. Got my deep. It's okay. It's like a, it's going to make my day today and tomorrow. So it's made. <laughs> uh, perfect. Well, do you have, you want to, I, I said, I, I've got a few minutes. If you have any questions for you, I will answer anything. Well, Ooh. Karina might have asked you this one already, but I was wondering why you told Kyle that you didn't want to be a godfather. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, um, I love Kyle, but that's not my position. I figured it'd be a good one to have. Yeah, it would, I would be very generous. So whoever, Whoever I am the godfather for in the future, potentially, maybe, that will be a good choice. I don't blame him for attempting, but, you know, also, <laughs> like... Not your time. Right? Like, I can't... He tried to draft me right out of high school, and I'm like, I gotta go... I gotta get a couple years more experience under my belt before I dive in. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> it does. I don't know. I'm kind of blanking right now. I don't really know if I have any questions. Hey, no problem. That's that is that is not an issue, Lindsay. But the more important thing here is that you have the best goddamn birthday of your life. And thank you for being a fan and for watching. And I really do appreciate, you know, you guys and, and the rest of the, the challenge trash talk team for having me and for the work you thank guys you for play. coming and joining on our podcast. Hell yeah. And and you know, it's it, it, an understated part of our success are the groups and the you know accounts that are making different memes and videos and highlights and all of that stuff it's super cool if anyone that's on the show says they don't watch it they're full of shit so good <laughs> on you guys for for crushing it and again i appreciate you all thanks a lot for having me Thank, Thank you, you so Devin. much, Devin. Thank we you. we really appreciate you being on. Um, we appreciate you coming on and talking with us, bullshit, and having a drink, saying happy birthday to Lindsay, just all of that, answering the fan questions. It's truly been a blessing to be able to sit down and, and talk to you and get to know you a little better on a more personal note. So we really appreciate that. Thanks a lot. And uh, I'll be happy to be back sometime in the future. So you guys just let me know. Absolutely. We'd love to have you back. Thank you, Devin. Bye, Devin. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you all. Bye now. Bye. Bye.
Holy shit. All right, guys, thanks for coming in and listening. I got to say that was a hell of a first episode. Shout out to Devin Walker. A hell of a way to make an entrance and a great interview. Make sure you follow Devin on IG at MTV underscore Devin and on Twitter at MTV Devin Walker. Also, guys, don't forget to pick up all that gear we were talking about at Where Devin Walker. You can find everything on his link tree, and we've got that post in the description below. Once again, thank you for everyone here at the Challenge Fandom Podcast, myself, Karina, Josh, Stephanie, Megan, Lindsay, and most of all, all of you guys tuning in. Of course, we couldn't do it without you. Have a great night.